to my youtube channel thank you so much for clicking on this video i'm sk and if you're new here i do hope you join the family by hitting the subscribe button for all my returning viewers thank you so much for rocking with me for always being there for me i hope you guys are doing fantastic so comment down below and tell me how you guys are doing i hope you guys have had a wonderful week and for this coming weekend i hope your weekend is amazing okay today is monday it's a bank holiday here in the uk and by the time you guys get this video it's going to be the following week week so next Sunday and I was meant to film this video from I think last week I didn't give you guys a vlog last week because <laughs> life y'all life is happening okay there's life happening <laughs> um yeah oh my goodness guys this pregnancy journey right if you guys have been following it's just been super super amazing so far and you know this morning i woke up and my heart is like these past few days i think my heart has been racing and you know today is actually today's the second of may yes it is the second of may it's monday the second of may and i have exactly two weeks left at work before i'm officially off until next year because baby boy is going to make his entrance in a few weeks by the time you see this video i'll be 35 weeks along which means that we have about five weeks y'all five weeks before baby gets here what i wanted to discuss with you guys i mean in the previous video i did talk about a past trauma that i had that could possibly affect my labor and delivery so i just wanted to touch base on that elaborate on that some more because i didn't actually go into details with you guys so if you're new here i'll have about 12 years in between of pregnancies because i have a 12 year old daughter well she will be 12 years old in june around the same time i'm due to give birth to her brother my whole labor and delivery for my first baby for that birth was four hours and guys believe it or not at the time i thought oh my gosh i had no idea that labor could last this long and then i started hearing crazy stories about people who've been in labor for like days and i'm like what so i'm guessing four hours was like a great delivery period or whatever but it's the after effects of what happened it actually left me traumatized for a really really long time and that's what i'm gonna get into you know my experience and how the doctor treated me because he was not the kindest i don't remember his name but even if i did i'm not gonna call anyone's name that was many many years ago and that was back in angola where i gave birth i live in the uk if you've just clicked on this video i'm filming this from the uk this will be my first baby that i'm having in england so yeah but before we dive into all those traumas and emotional disasters and all of that stuff i have here some baby clothes you know every time i go out shopping and stuff i have been picking up some bits and pieces oh my goodness this blanket is just super soft i'm not even joking i got it for like four pounds at primark i haven't washed anything yet so that's what i'm intending to do today i'm unpacking everything because they've just been in here in bags waiting for me to pack away and um yeah but i need to wash them do you guys wash your baby clothes so, you know they come brand new in the packets and stuff so this one is from asda and it's just some body suits if you can see so just different color body suits but comment down below though and tell me if you guys actually wash your baby clothes before you put them on seeing that they are in the package that's what i'm going to do anyways because when i had shakela i actually washed every single piece of clothes because you know babies this skin is so sensitive in the stores people do tend to un like take these out I'm not saying they come from like a dirty factory or whatever but i know people in the stores do take these out and have a feel and look at them and stuff like that so it's um yeah so this is just one and it came with a pack of it's a pack of seven for like 750 i think i got this from in asda so yeah it's just a bunch of 
Yay! <laughs> I actually bought a lot of zero to three months. I haven't bought any newborn clothes. And, you know, watching videos, people have been saying, you know, you should get some newborn clothes. This is just two, uh, two bibs. I think I got this from h and No, dribble proof lining. I don't know if you can hear it. It's like a plasticky thing in there in between the fabric. It's dribble proof, which is great. And I think I got it for, it's for three pounds from asda as well what i was going to say is i see people they buy clothes like newborn clothes now from when i had shakela i did not purchase any newborn clothes i just purchased zero to three months and those clothes fit her just fine she weighs six pounds 11 ounces and you know i watched so many videos since being pregnant and there are people like oh my gosh the zero to three months swallow the baby it's best to buy newborn clothes but i don't know what size this baby is going to be but i'm pretty sure that the zero to three months will be fine so i haven't purchased any newborn outfits i picked this up the other day as well it's a pack of three and i did get it for like 11 pounds so yeah it's just a pack of three and i just looked at it and i thought oh my gosh these are so so cute i could just look at his little chubby self being in this <laughs> So yeah, that was from Asda. So I got a lot of clothes. So his clothes are like a mixture from Asda, Primark, H&M, and Matalan. Those are the only places that I have shopped so far for him. This is so cute. I love it. So I just bought it just because I was like, I like the colors. But this is actually three to six months, which is like, it was for four pounds. So I did buy a few three to six months just because, you know, you don't know what baby you're going to get and he might outgrow these zero to three months in no time. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get a few three to six months. But I have mentioned in previous videos, I didn't go too crazy with the clothes and that because his dad, my husband, he's in Florida at the moment. So most of baby's clothes will be purchased from that side of the world so i didn't go too crazy sean would kill me he's like don't go too crazy so we're gonna get most of his things from up there but you know you know when you're a new mom and you're in the store and you're like looking for stuff and you're like oh my gosh i can't resist i have to get that i have to get this i have to get that but i kind of stuck to the zero to three months so sean can proceed with buying three to six months six to nine months and stuff like that you know what i mean i got like a few of these and i'm gonna say guys primark is like super super cheap like this was for one pound 30 pence and these are just some little vest tops. I did get a few of these different colors in them and that. I got a few muslin squares from Primark as well for four pounds. These little things here, lifesaver. Lifesaver they are and I don't need to stock up on loads of these, you know. Put baby on here if I'm breastfeeding. They came in handy when I used to breastfeed Shakela, you know, baby would be there. And I would just put this across me and she's there, you know, just across. She'd be like under there and she'd be like... <laughs> You know, just to cover up because I am not into just taking out my boobs in public or in front of anyone for that matter, even if it's family. I just feel like there should be some sort of decency. And I know people advocate for, you know, pregnant women and you shouldn't be shamed to breastfeed and stuff like that. But for me personally, I didn't take my boobs out before I was pregnant. And just because I have to breastfeed this little human means that I'm just going to pop it out and show Tom, Dick and Harry um, <laughs> my boobs. So I do cover up there's something else that you can buy as well to wear you know what there's a lot of different hacks and stuff that you can purchase to cover up and do this and do that but i coming from the caribbean it's just you know when you didn't really have access to all of these things and you just kind of did things the old school way i'm just in the old school when i don't feel like going way out of my way just to you know for something simple as breastfeeding where i could just simply just throw something on top of me even like his blanket he could be in this blanket and i'm feeling him and then you know just cover up myself a little bit and i just tuck that in like that and yeah you know <laughs> that's that but yeah these are just like a bunch of you know nice little outfits little shorts here with the matching top got some cute little socks as well they came in like a pack of five or something i can't remember a couple of hats so a lot of the colors that i got as well look at this little shot guys look at these little shots crazy and <laughs> this is zero to three months y'all you know i got like little tops like matching because you know he's a summer baby so he's gonna wear a lot of these because i don't really believe in like cloaking up my baby you know and they're like oh my gosh you have to keep them warm you have to keep hats on and socks on but i come from the caribbean 
and Shakila literally came home in a onesie you know the whole long cover up and blanket but as soon as we got home I undressed her and she had a vest on she had her socks on and that and you know put her to sleep and I took the hat off and everything and I mean she was fine you know when you're in a hot climate I don't feel the need to just bundle them up per se they're gonna learn to regulate their body temperature and I think that's why people do it because you did they, they you know they'll be fine they will be fine people panic all the time especially if you're a new mom and I didn't panic you know I when I had Shaquille I was 21 22 and I didn't really have my mom wasn't really around my mother was not in Anguilla so I basically did it on my own like maybe like a few advice from friends but you pick up things along the way and that's it so I just don't worry about <laughs> <laughs> things like that i got loads of like little white stuff mini vests and all of that so you see you get three packs of vests and it was just for three pounds sleep suits these were 10 pounds and these were from asda and it's a pack of five i'll pack a couple of these in my hospital bag the good thing about these is that it comes with the so i didn't purchase any mittens i'm gonna say you know they said to get mittens and stuff like that because they scratched their face and all of that i didn't keep mittens on shakila and they kept falling off and all of that so when i saw these i was very very happy that it comes with something like this and you can just do that and your little fingers are you know covered up in there so you don't really have to put mittens on which is fantastic you know so that's what i've done and i bought the yeah, this has a pack of five i didn't buy so i think i probably have like maybe 15 of different packs of these because you know that's just for him to sleep in and you know summer is coming up and it's going to be quite hot here so um and it's zero to three months so when by the time it's like september it might start to get just a bit chilly and you know he'll still have time to wear them regardless and then just some more little packs of you know little itsy bitsy pieces of vets vests and stuff like that <sighs> who is that drilling in the middle of my video if you guys if you can hear it i'm so sorry because i don't know why they choose to be drilling and fixing when i'm filming but how cute is this and this was for 10 pounds y'all and this is like so this is super soft i wish you guys could actually feel this material i don't know if you can like have a look at it but it's so nice and cozy but yeah it's three to six months and then i got this outfit it's like a piece of it's like seven pieces and i'm thinking you know what he can probably come home in this i was gonna get him something personalized with his name on it but i find this so cute it's just like a little pen set it comes with the bib it comes with socks it comes with a hat this in there and then the pants and then this could like cover up you know yeah, so you could probably come home in that. But anyways, I'm going to move on and get right into the video. That's just a few pieces of clothes that I have out. And I'm going to start washing them and stuff like that. These are just so cute as well. I can't wait to see him in these. Oh my goodness. These nice little colorful tops and whatnot. But yeah, let's get into the video. <laughs> right, guys. So now that we have some of baby's things out of the way, that little nice little haul that I just did. I wanted to talk about basically you know the past trauma and the decision that I have made for this labor and delivery first of all I have to say when I gave birth to Shakela, as I mentioned before it lasted for four hours I did a natural birth so it was unmedicated and that was not by choice because I did beg for medication but sadly in Anguilla that's not something that they provide that's not something that they provide or provided at the time. I don't know what it's like there now because that was, as I said, it's been 12 years. So epidural was only for when you're going to have surgery, uh, a C-section. There was no pain medication of any kind. And, you know, moving here, you hear about the different sort of pain options that you have you know for the pain like epidural there's other sorts of medicines there's gas and air i didn't hear i've never heard of gas and air until i came here i was like what is gas and air but anywho over the next couple of weeks so my next midwife appointment is i think is next week i'm going to discuss my birthing plan with her so you know your birthing plan it includes everything that you would like to happen during the birth so what medication that you would like to have or not have is just little things like anything that you want to make your labor go as you want so it's your plan so whether you want a c-section whether you want just a natural birth or with epidural or a water birth or 
whatever any little thing that you know you want whether you want a private suite whether you want to be you know on the ward and little things like that and i did think about also booking a private room and i looked into that i think it's almost 200 pounds i think a night for a room so i'm not sure what i will do because it's just like for one night isn't it if all goes well we pray that all goes well and i don't have to spend more than one night in hospital but you know it's little things like that you discuss as i mentioned i had a natural childbirth with Shakela. I pushed her within three pushes and she was out. I kid you not, okay? So I got to the hospital around half nine and then I was in like full labor around 10-ish. Listen, that pain, right? Ah, you never forget that pain, y'all. But anyways, it was dilated to 10 centimeters and it was time for me to push and Shakela was out in within three pushes. I wasted no time. I was like, you gotta come out. <laughs> And I was just so determined, y'all. I was like, I'm not going to be in here. Push it, push it, push it. And I was like, Ugh. and I pushed about three times and she was out. So I didn't even spend, I didn't spend more than 10 minutes, to be honest. It was quite easy for me. That was just amazing. Shakela's dad, he was there throughout the little labor and all of that. And then when it came to pushing, um, he was there. But then in my mind, I'm like, okay, this is me. This is all me. There's nothing that he can do. At this point that can help me can help me push this is all me you can do it and i just pushed three times she was out fine that was beautiful i remember the feeling that i had being a first time mom when they put her on top of me just i could just remember the date like the night she was born 2 30 in the morning and it was just everything amazing everything was wonderful um placenta came out just fine and then she started checking to see you know if i had any tears and that because that was one of my fears y'all getting torn during that birthing process and when she said nope outside is just fine i was like thank goodness because you know i felt fine there was no stinging burning nothing like shakela came out placenta came out and everything was absolutely fine it was like it couldn't be more perfect okay when she started checking she was checking inside and i was like what are you looking for <laughs> you know it's like what are you looking for she said, oh, we're just checking to see if there's any in, anything internal damage or any internal tear. And I was like, internal? Is that possible? How can you get torn inside? And she said, yeah, it does happen. And sadly, that's what happened to me. And um, I remember she put the, is it a gauze? So she put something in there. So it wasn't anything that was pressing at the time because she said, there's no way to determine how big of a tear it was she just knew that there was a, a tear so they put like a i think it was a gauze um it's called they put it in there to see how much blood that would absorb and that would kind of determine if the tear was bigger or you know so hours passed so about eight in the morning doctor came to see me to check so i went into another room so left shakela by my bedside and went into another room to be checked out and I kid you not, this doctor, he was like tearing me. Sorry for how I'm about to describe it, but he was basically tearing me wide open. Bearing in mind that I just gave birth less than six hours ago. Okay, it was like less than six hours ago and to do something like that. And he's like, I'm checking. I need to check this to see how this tear is. And I was like, okay. So I'm on this bed. He's like forcing me open like that. And I'm like when i tell you the pain that pain was just it was ridiculous and i kept telling him i said that really hurt and he said yes but i need to see and there's no way of me knowing if i don't check and i'm trying to say but can you be more gentle and he's like listen this can take i can't remember the exact words but it was along this line like he basically say this can take five minutes or this can take an hour it's your choice and you know looking back on that i truly truly believe that he spoke to me like that and treated me that way because i was a young mother i'm thinking me being 34 right now if i was in that position right now no doctor would be able to speak to me like that and i truly believe it's because of my age that he felt that he could speak to me like that like i was a child you know and i was like how dare you I was just like okay you know what i'm gonna close my eyes i'm gonna bear it and he was just in they didn't care he didn't say i'm really sorry you know like that's how doctors are supposed to be someone just gave birth and me personally it's like that's a traumatic experience in itself you know especially for a first time mom young mom 
to just give birth naturally and for you not to come with care like to be gentle so he didn't say i'm really sorry this is going to hurt a little bit but i need you to just be patient with me are you know along those lines so anyways i was like you know what just get on with it and when i tell you it was the most excruciating thing in the end it took a few minutes and he said you're gonna have to go into theater the tear is much bigger than we thought and you're gonna have to go into surgery you know i wasn't nervous at the time i just said thank god because this was so painful and i was just happy that he was just out of me and just i'm about to just get wheeled in and stitched up and all of that stuff so you know i walked back to my room just fine i was happy there was one other person there with me another lady she was there with me so it was just two of us there was only two children born on the 15th of june um <laughs> 2010 in anguilla and i gave birth naturally i think she had a planned cesarean or something i'm not sure but yeah and everyone was like they couldn't believe how, how do i put it i was very much you couldn't tell that i just gave birth hours ago okay i was just up busy walking talking smiling laughing calling people up in the morning like hey i had the baby and they were like say what no i was like yeah i had i had the baby shakila is here and they didn't believe me no one believed me because they're like you sound too jolly like that's not how you're supposed to sound like you okay and i was like i'm great you know i pushed she was out in three minutes i mean in three pushes and that was that i think probably like a couple of hours later after all of that i went into theater um they put me completely under um it was no choice at the time either to i think nowadays you can still be awake while they're doing surgery down there even like a cesarean but that was not an option at the time either and i don't think i would have chosen that option because the thought of just being awake and knowing that someone is down there just anyways um yeah so they put me to sleep they were like count to 10 and you're gonna go to sleep and i was like no i'm not and i'm like in my mind i was like one two three and i was like i ain't going to sleep oh no this ain't working and i don't even think i made it to 10 y'all and i was out <laughs> that's the last thing i remember about that experience i don't remember when they woke me up because you know they have to wake you up before you leave in there to make sure that you know you're good before they wheel you back to your room you have to wake up and i guess talk and they're gonna be like you're okay well i don't remember any of that i went back to my room i was really really down drugged out and everything i couldn't move i couldn't talk and you know when people started they came to visit me visiting hours and all of that and they were like we just spoke to you this morning like what's going on because this isn't this isn't you 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 were just fine today and i said you know it was just fast forward to hours later in the evening I was in so much pain okay and that was from the pushing I don't know the the tear it turned out that it was a third degree tear so you have you have second degree tears third degree fourth degree I mean it was a third degree tear which is they said it's quite common especially if it's your first baby it can happen if you have a large baby if it's your first baby also if you have had a long labor or if you needed like assistance to have the baby like a forcep whatever that thing is called it increases your chances of um another tear and also sadly it can happen again if it's happened before second time round, it can happen again i stayed in hospital for about two days i went home you know no one really explained to me too much about the tear i just thought okay it was just a little tear and only when i moved here and had these appointments i realized just the severity of it and that's why they off they asked me what sort of deliver i would like like do i want to do do i want to try for a natural birth do i want a c-section all that stuff and you know because it's it's completely up to you i know back then like in angola as well you couldn't just choose to have a c-section especially if you were young here you do have that choice like they can't tell you no 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 because if you if you know yourself you're unable to push or you're you, you you fear that something like that happens and you know it's just to make your process a lot easier and it's up to you so after being in hospital for two days i was actually i was actually in a lot of pain and it it wasn't i don't think it was due it wasn't really due to the i don't know if it was connected to the tear or just the whole process of giving birth like i think i had hemorrhoids and stuff like that as well i wasn't able to sit like this yeah like kid you not right when i had my when i went home from the hospital this was literally me i was just sitting on the side like this and i was like how am i gonna breastfeed if i cannot sit down how am i gonna do anything so then you know i was advised to breastfeed laying down 
Let me tell y'all, if you guys never lay down to breastfeed, heaven sent. That's how I breastfed Shaquilla. It was only supposed to be until I healed up and everything, but that carried on and we co-slept. So Shaquilla never, ever, never slept in her crib. She just always slept with me. And that was one of the reasons because I was unable to like sit up and feed her. So we would lay down a lot. I would, you know, burp her and all that stuff. And we, yeah, they say you shouldn't co-sleep. I did that and Shaquilla was in my bed for years. Don't judge me, okay? But she was fine. I didn't roll on her. She was safe okay she was saved that's all i'm gonna say so don't come for me in the comment section like yeah we coast up and shakila stayed in my bed for years so you know moving on so yeah when i met with the consultant to, and he asked me if i wanted to try for nat natural delivery or whatever i thought about so many options and i just been contemplating just everything because what i did think about was okay i know i don't want to be in that much pain like i was with shakila that was the most excruciating pain Ever, you know having a natural birth no unmedicated birth and I know a lot of women there's like this big stigma you know it's like women feel like there's a lot of women out there that feel like they're lesser than if they take medication to have their babies and stuff like that and I feel like that should stop like if you want to have meds that's entirely up to you you shouldn't be judged for it you know why be in pain when we have a headache and we can't bear it we do take pain meds it's the same with having a kid so I thought about that and I was like, yeah, definitely, I'm getting an epidural so I can just sit back in a hospital and go through this labor. I could talk to y'all, I could vlog, you know, looking all fab, like, ooh. <laughs> but anyways, so I said, you know what, that's what I'm going to do the moment I go to discuss my birth plan and all of that stuff. I'm going to make sure put in there that I want an epidural because I think you have to request that in advance as well you just don't show up and like oh please give me a epidural because it could take a while but if you have it there at least they know that okay that's that's what you requested that's what you want then that's absolutely fine then you know i thought about the epidural the risk because it's this needle that's it goes by your spine you know and you you can't move and it's risky but I'm thinking, do I want to be at that excruciating pain or get over my fear of this big old needle that's about to like plunge near my spine to relieve me of this pain? You know, so you think about stuff like that and I was like, I'm definitely gonna go through with it. You know, I'm not entirely afraid of needles. It's just, yeah, the thought of it being near my spine, but I'm not afraid of needles. So I decided that I am gonna get the epidural. And then I started watching videos on YouTube and I started watching water birds, like home wa water birds. And I was like, what if I have a home wa water birth? And I even discussed it with Sean. Me personally though, I would not want to have my baby at home. I would want to be in a hospital. So if something you know, were to happen, then I have all the medical help that I can get. But at the same time, you know, Sean, time passed and then Sean brought it up and he's like, would you not want to have a water birth? And I was like, I didn't really give it much thought at the time, but then I watched a few videos and, you know, I'd read up on it and I was like, okay, you know what? To Sean, I was like, we're going to have a water birth. Let's do the water birth. <laughs> so that's the decision that I decided. I, I decided that I'm going to have a water birth. You know, people might think like, what are you crazy? But I, the birth, the, the birth and center there at the hospital that I'm going to be at is beautiful. I think you're just in a room by yourself. There's a pool in there or the tub or whatever. And it helps with the labor as well. You can get gas in there. Sadly, there's no epidural if you're going to have a water birth because what the epidural does to you as well, it numbs you, which I didn't know that you get numb to your legs and everything you're unable to walk really you're just like in bed and stuff i can go from the pool back to the bed blah 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 stuff like that but i would like to labor in the pool and give birth in the pool um so that's what i've decided <laughs> that's what i've decided to do and it's just so so it's just so crazy like choosing to have a water birth and i never knew that i would choose to have a water birth but i think it's the most it's it's the best option for me right now and you know they'll have i'll have gas and air so i'll get to experience that what what that's like um it kind of helps i'm more i my tolerance for pain i would say is quite high when i was laboring with shakila i didn't scream you know i used the breathing technique and her dad was there and he was like kind of doing that with me and you know i was just breathing like and then the pain was hitting me 
but I never screamed not once you know so I think I will be fine and I'll have that gas in there there and you use that every time you're feeling the contractions and stuff like that so I think I will be fine I will be fine it's just so crazy that all of a sudden I'm preparing to have this baby that I didn't want to have I didn't want to have another baby um, I did do a video talking about that you know and the main reason was the pain that I was feeling the pain the the pain of labor and you know I was content with just the one child and when I met Sean Sean doesn't have any kids guys and you know I met Sean and we I don't know I got open to the idea of having more kids and just starting a family with him getting married settling down with him and just having kids and now I'm even open to having more kids <laughs> more babies <laughs> well maybe one more baby not babies this little fella in here and maybe one more maybe a little girl or a little boy little brother for him to play with because you know Shaquille is going to be long gone up the house so it'd be nice for him to have a little brother isn't it but I'd love to see a little girl, you know, bonding with Sean and stuff like that. So it's just so crazy. SK, you're having a baby in the pool. I think I'm going to end the video here because it is quite a long video already. But yeah, that's what I decided to do. I'm going to have a water birth, no medication, so no epidural. I'm going to do gas in there and that's my decision. And hopefully it goes as planned. But if it doesn't... You know, I'm prepared for anything, guys. I'm preparing myself for everything and anything possible. So even if I have to do a cesarean section, I'm prepared for that as well, you know, because there's always like a 50-50 thing with labor. You know, it's very risky for both me and baby. It's always going to be the case. And you have to prepare yourself for emergencies. And yeah, so I have to go. Right now, I'm going to go and unbox the gifts that you guys purchased from the baby registry. I'm going to start washing baby's clothes, start packing my hospital bag, have to pack his bag. I will be ready. So if little man decides that he wants to jump out a bit earlier, we are prepared. So that's what I'm going to go do now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for sitting here if you made it to the very end of this video. I hope you found it a bit informative and you learn a little bit more about me and my previous labor experience. Probably in future I can go into even further detail but that was just like the shell of things and just you know, a little bit in between and you know but at least you got to know like just a little bit and yeah, so thank you so much if you made it this far in the video and look out for the next video look out for my hospital bag and you know what i'm packing in it and i have a vlog coming up as well so look out for those videos so again thank you so much hope you guys did enjoy it and i will see you guys in my next video take care guys hello you guys welcome to my youtube channel ah! hello you guys welcome to my youtube channel oh, it's in my eye. It's <laughs> hello you guys welcome to my youtube channel i'm sk i hope you guys are doing fantastic and Hello you guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I'm SK and if you're new here, I do hope you join the family by hitting the subscribe button for all my returning viewers. Thank you so much for always for rocking with me. <laughs> Thank you so much for rocking with me, for always being there for me. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. <laughs>